Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Today we are trying out this viral makeup look that everyone is calling the Latte Makeup Look. It's basically um, an elevated approach to the classic natural glam. And I'm doing this all in partnership with IUNIC. So without further ado, if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm taking the IUNIX Centella Calming Gel Cream and applying this onto our model's skin. This is an extremely lightweight gel moisturizer. And if you've been with me on my channel since the very beginning, you know that a gel is my absolute favorite formula to use when it comes to moisturizer because well, it's lightweight, it, um, it absorbs quickly into the skin, and I find that it works well on just about every skin type. Now, this specific one I'm using is vegan and is great for those of you who struggle with sensitive or acne-prone skin because the Centella Asiatica ingredient helps calm and soothe the skin while the tea tree leaf water in there helps with the inflammation and even helps excess oil, which as a result will help prolong the wear of the makeup. Our model today, Morgan, does have acne prone skin. It's something she's experienced her whole life. So while she's learned how to treat her skin on a daily basis over the years, I wanna make sure that I too am taking care of her skin so she doesn't experience any flare ups after today, but also while achieving, you know, the hydrated and dewy look that this latte makeup look calls for. After this step, I'm taking the Ionix Centella Calming AC Spot Cream, applying a bit to the back of my hand before applying this onto any areas she has, um, like acne spots or active blemishes. This too is a gel formula, but a little goes a long way because it's technically a spot treatment. The formula contains AHA and BHAs, which stimulate cell turnover and keep the pores clean, but also a PHA, which is really mild and I find does well retaining the moisture in the skin. In fact, what I like to do is keep these two products in the fridge, so when I go to use them, they feel even more cooling on the skin, especially on inflamed blemishes. But. Either way, if you have a similar skin type to Morgan, I'd consider these products must tries because they contain those quality ingredients, they work well underneath makeup, they're super affordable and accessible too. You can find them on Amazon. I'll put the links down below. So yeah, <laughs> check them out and let me know what you think. Now moving right along for foundation, I'm using the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation in the shade Vanuatu and applying this on first to the center of the face before blending and diffusing this out Outwards with a sponge because for this look it's really the center of the face where we want most of the coverage and it's around the perimeter of the face we want to kind of keep you know more on the sheer side but I chose this foundation because of the shade I, I wanted something that leaned a little more yellow golden and I know a lot of people like this foundation I've used it before maybe a handful of times I don't know and, and to me personally it's just <laughs> it's, it's okay you know what I mean like it's not bad but it's not something I'm obsessed with either it's just okay and it does the job now once I have this blended in I'm taking this Too Faced Born This Way concealer in the shade of maple and brushing this onto different areas of the face to bronze up the skin such as the forehead cheekbones and jawline this cappuccino makeup look is all about bronzy dewy skin that's soft and sculpted so using a cream or liquid bronzer is going to help achieve that structure but while also maintaining that that luminous finish that our skin naturally has and you can even use this product later on for the eye makeup too if you'd like because we are pairing this complexion with a soft smoky eye which is perfect for this cappuccino oh not cappuccino latte <laughs> did i say cappuccino a second ago oh goodness i'm losing it i think i did say cappuccino earlier but you know what i mean cappuccino latte espresso i can't keep up with these makeup trends whatever it's being called now <laughs> i promise it's gonna turn out amazing
Once I have this blended in, I'm taking this Too Faced Born This Way concealer, but this time in the shade Pearl to highlight and conceal the under eye. This is quite a bright shade for her, but as you know, I love a bright under eye. And once I flip over the sponge to the side that we had used to blend out the foundation earlier, it all kind of mixes together and evens out. Now, if you're using your own products, you can apply on the concealer with the applicator or if you're a makeup artist working on a client, you can apply it on with a brush and then blend it just to keep everything hygienic. Or you can apply it on to the back of your hand first and press it on with your sponge, which is what I'm doing here today. Now that the under eyes are concealed, I'm using the cream formula in this Patrick Ta Cream Blush Duo in the shade She's Wanted and quickly popping this onto the cheeks for a hint of color. We'll come back to this later on for the powder, but in the meantime, I just had to show you this because it's so beautiful. It's the perfect sun-kissed color for the summertime and works on just about all skin tones. To set the under eye into place, I'm taking this one size translucent setting powder and with an eyeshadow brush, I'm lightly dusting this onto the areas we had applied the concealer. And I'll even bring this down to the nostrils and mouth. How much you use of this depends on a few factors, including your skin type, how much product you've applied, the climate you live in, and how long you plan on wearing your makeup for. So keep all of that in mind. But for the average person, a little here and a little there should do the job and help prevent your concealer from creasing. For the rest of the face, I'm using the Kosas Klaus... <laughs> the... Oh my gosh, that's a tongue twister. The Kosas Cloud Set Powder. <laughs> there we go. This is in the shade Comfy, I believe, and I'm brushing this on with a large fluffy face brush. You can instead use your setting powder if you like, but the reason I'm choosing to use this powder for the rest of the face is because it has a slight amount of coverage to it. And when I say slight, I really, I really mean that. It's very, very sheer, but just enough to help smooth out the complexion for a soft and even look. As promised, I've head back to the powder and the Patrick Ta blush to reinforce the cream blush we used and to intensify that beautiful burgundy tone before I use the baking technique. Now, I haven't seen a lot of people bake with this um, <laughs> the, the latte look, but Morgan had said she's been watching my TikToks and using the baking method. So of course we had to go for it today and we'll come back later to wipe this off. In the meantime, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in the shade a Soft Brown to fill in and shape her brows with. Much like the complexion, we're keeping the brow soft and sculpted. Little by little, running this product through, building up the density on the outer half of the brow and extending the tail outwards for a lifted effect. Once I complete the other brow off camera, we'll start on the eyes using this Bobbi Brown Cream Shadow Stick in the shade Taupe. I'm not even gonna cut this footage or nothing, so you can really uh, get an idea as to how quick and easy this is to use. I run it across the complete upper lid before using a blending brush to diffuse this up and out. Even for beginners, guys, it, it, it's pretty hard to mess this up because it doesn't require a whole lot of precision. What's most important here is getting the product on and letting the brush do the rest of the work for you. Next up, I'm using this Makeup by Mario Master Mattes palette to set the cream into place. I didn't use one specific shade in the palette. I, I kind of mixed a few together, but depending on your skin tone, you'll want to choose a shade that complements the cream shadow you lay down underneath it. To glam this up a little, I'm using this ColourPop Super Shock Highlighter in the shade Natch and popping this right onto the center of the lid just to dress this up. I like how it plays up the look without it looking overly done. And using the same eyeshadow you used on the upper lid, you'll want to use to lightly smoke out the lower lash line as well. Mm. 
for liner, I'm using this one size pencil eyeliner in the shade of Busty Brown. And I'm using this to tight line along the upper and lower waterline and then to glide across the upper lash line before smudging this out with an eyeshadow brush. How much you apply of this and where you apply it kind of comes down to your eye shape. Morgan has these big, beautiful brown eyes. So because they are naturally more round, we're able to get away with applying eyeliner in the waterline without making her eyes look a whole lot uh, like thinner. You know what I mean? It comes out looking sultry and effortless. For lashes, I'm using these Kiss Falscara lashes. I start out by applying their bonding glue by running it through the root of her natural lashes in the same way we would apply a mascara before applying on the individuals. Now, this is only the second time in my life I've ever applied lashes on from underneath the natural lashes. Like, you know, usually I, I would apply the falsies on top of the lash, like most people do, but Long story short, I found that the first time I did this, it was much easier and quicker than I thought it would be. So I'm trying it again today. And I'm only using three of the cluster lashes on each side, which I think is the perfect amount to achieve this natural look. Once they're on, you apply the Kiss Sealer underneath to remove any sticky residue and bada bing, bada boom, that's all there is to it. It might take a little practice, but once you get the hang of it, it only takes a minute or two. Now, once I have these applied, I'll take this Makeup Forever double-ended mascara and use the side with a smaller wand to separate the bottom lashes and to add length, which I think makes it look more in uniform with the top lashes we've added. Now that we're done with the eyes, I'm wiping off the powder we've let bake here for the last few minutes underneath the eyes before I take this MAC Soft and Gentle Highlighter to dust onto the high points of her face, such as the cheekbones, cupid's bow, and tip of the nose. This is such a throwback moment using this highlighter. I remember anyone and everyone using this at one point, myself included, and you know, using this again reminds me of why. It truly adds that soft and gentle glow to the skin without looking overly glittery or shimmery. For lips today, I'm using this Anastasia Beverly Hills Lip Liner in the shade Deep Taupe to trace the borders of her lips with. I used this on my sister the other day for the first time and I absolutely loved how it looked, so I wanted to use it for today's look on Morgan. For her skin tone, it has enough depth to it that allows me to lightly overdraw the lip line for that plumping effect, but still look natural once we pair it with the lipstick and gloss. The liquid lipstick I'm using is from Urban Decay in the shade Cuff Up, and I'm using this mostly in the center of the lip for a pop of brightness. I think this combo is, is perfect. They contrast each other really well and ties in the whole neutral color story this look calls for. Now, if you wanna stop here, you totally can, but I'm gonna take it one step further using this Anastasia Beverly Hills Lip Gloss in the shade Soft Pink to add even more shine. And besides the glossy finish, this also has a hint of pink to it, as the name suggests, which brings this lip to life even more. To finish off the look, I'm using this Dalba First Spray Serum to set and lock this makeup into place, which makes this the final step in how we created this viral latte look on my naturally beautiful friend. I hope you all enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.